Hello, my name is Nathan Jackson, and this is Nathan's Neighborhood History. Today, I will be guiding you through the Seward neighborhood. So this building here was built in 1883 as a German bakery. And at the time, St. Louis had actually very many German bakeries. And Seward, for most of its history, had a very large German population. Many bakeries were present in the neighborhood. This particular bakery was owned by a guy named Emil Ringwald. And Emil Ringwald operated a bakery here until about 1892. And then in 1892, he decided to change locations and he moved his bakery over to Sydney Street and Lemp Avenue in the Benton Park neighborhood. This house was built in 1850 for a blacksmith named John G. Thielman who immigrated to St. Louis from Germany. This house is architecturally significant as well as being one of the few homes in St. Louis to feature a gallery porch on the front. This example uh, was built in 1850 and features uh, federal style features such as these limestone lintels here. You have a pitched roof and then as you can see, it's got checkerboard windows with the shutters. So this building here is what's known as a flounder house. A flounder house is a unique style of building that isn't found in too many neighborhoods across the United States, but St. Louis has a large number of them. It was thought to have been brought over by German immigrants in the 1840s and its purpose essentially was to allow water to run off from the side of the building onto the other side so it didn't hit the neighboring house. This house was built in about 1847 for a laborer named Christopher Otto. It's believed to be the oldest flounder house in the city of St. Louis. St. Louis has a very large number of flounder houses, actually the most of any city in the nation with about 300 examples. This house here was actually built as a flounder house back in the 1850s in the Greek Revival style. And it was in the 1890s that they decided to do a little bit of remodeling and they redid the front of the house in this Romanesque revival style. A lot of buildings in St. Louis have these iron stars on the sides of them. The history behind these uh, starts in about 1849. And why that year is important is because St. Louis had a fire in that year. And uh, the fire was caused when a steamboat known as the White Cloud caught fire and it crashed into the other steam boat, caught them on fire. The fire spread to the buildings and actually burned most of the downtown district along the riverfront at that time. And when they decided to rebuild, the new building codes said that all the buildings had to be built out of fireproof materials such as brick or stone. How the cast iron stars play into this is that a lot of these buildings not only have brick walls, but they also have multiple layers of brick walls that serve as insulation as well. The stars are the ends of cast iron rods that go through the entire building and keep the bricks from moving out of place. This building is one of the many Italianate style buildings in St. Louis. The Italianate style was common for about 50 years from the 1840s to the 1890s and it took on many different forms. It originally started off as 
a style used in many country homes, and it was brought over after wealthy Americans would go and tour Europe and they saw many Italian Renaissance buildings that they liked and imitated the style here in America. The style uh, later evolved after the Civil War to be used as townhouses and row houses, and in this case, a four-family flat. Some of the characteristics that make up an Italian style building are it has very tall and thin arched windows. It also has a cornice, which is the piece that lines the roof, and that cornice has wooden brackets interspersed throughout it. This house here is a great example of what is known as the Second Empire style. One of the main features of the style is the mansard roof up above. The mansard roof is a third story roof and basically functions as a living space in the attic. This particular house was built in about 1869 and one of its early residents was a guy named Joseph Slezak. And Joseph Slezak was one of many Bohemian immigrants. In the 1850s and 60s, Seward was a hotspot for uh, Bohemian and other Eastern European countries for their immigrants to come. And all of them settled here in this area and the area just west of Seward that was known as Bohemian Hill. Most of Bohemian Hill today, unfortunately, has been lost to the intersection of Highway 44 and 55, but small portions of what was Bohemian Hill still stand. So this federal style building is one of the few remaining three-story federal style buildings left in the city of St. Louis. Typically, most of the federal style buildings of this height were located in the downtown area and very near downtown, and almost all of them have been demolished except for maybe about a dozen that still exist around the city. This one was built probably sometime around 1850, and some of its earliest residents were listed in city directories around 1857. This is another one of the older buildings in St. Louis. It was built in about 1858 in the federal style. It has many different parts. It's got this narrow uh, front-facing set of buildings here that were all built fronting the street. But the building also features uh, an alley house which is in the same complex behind. Alley houses were essentially built as extra rental properties by the landowners who would have either built uh, multifamily flats uh, or mansions up front and then had a separate alley building in back to create more income through renting it out. Multiple different homes throughout the Seward neighborhood were featured in historical architectural survey. This was in about 1960. At that time, these buildings were actually in pretty rough shape and falling apart. The neighborhood was one that was slated for urban renewal, which essentially meant that the neighborhood would be planned for full demolition. Thankfully, uh, the neighborhood was saved. Many people started renovating the homes in the neighborhood. Today, we have quite a number of St. Louis's pre-Civil War structures, such as this one, that still stand. This building actually has a lot of Creole influences, but it was built by the Germans, who basically just took a lot of those earlier uh, styles, such as this Creole porch, and added them to their new buildings when they first got here. Next door, we have another building also built in the 1850s, and this is what is known as a derby house. So a derby house essentially is 
a close cousin of the Flounder House, but what differentiates it from the Flounder House is that the Derby House has a gabled roof instead of a roof that slopes to one side, kind of like how a flounder fish does. The Derby House is much less common than the flounder, but often serves a similar function of being uh, successfully built on a small lot. So this building was built in 1874 in the Italian style, and it was originally used as the Union Hall, and many Germans congregated here. In 1896, this area was hard hit by the 1896 tornado, which destroyed many buildings throughout different St. Louis neighborhoods. And it heavily damaged this building, so part of the wall had to be rebuilt. Afterwards, it was a bowling alley for a little while, and during the time that it was a bowling alley, it was uh, frequented by a guy named William T. Koken, who was a prominent cast iron manufacturer in the city building cast iron storefronts. After Prohibition had started, St. Louis had to close a lot of its breweries, and so to replace these breweries, a lot of soda companies started, and one of which was Smile Orange Soda, which was located in this building. Other famous sodas that were started here in St. Louis include IBC Root Beer and 7-Up, both of which were invented here. This is one of the oldest buildings in all of St. Louis and is the oldest building in Soulard. Originally, this building was built for a French fur trapper in about 1810, and this would have been out in the wilderness back when fur trapping was one of the main industries in early period St. Louis, around the time when it was still in territorial Missouri. The house has a federal style brick lower floor, and it also has the frame upper floor, and it's one of St. Louis's oldest buildings, one of the only buildings in St. Louis to actually predate Missouri's statehood back in 1821. So this house was built in the Greek Revival style before 1847, and one of the more interesting features of this house is that it has a hip roof. And a hip roof essentially means that the roof is a pyramid. One of the earliest residents of this house was a guy named Joseph Corley, and he was a brewer and caulker and lived in this house in 1847. By 1851, it was home to a guy named Joseph Meyer. And then in 1857, a laborer named John Creel was one of the residents. By 1859 and 1860, a guy named George Hirsch lived in the house and he was a wagon maker. He lived here and his wagon making shop was next door at uh, the building on the corner, which was also built around 1845 or so. These buildings were both present during the Soulard Market Riot, which occurred down at the Soulard Market back in 1852. Thank you for joining us on the Soulard Tour. I run the Facebook page and tour company, St. Louis History and Architecture. We give full walking tours of St. Louis neighborhoods, and I also write historic biographies of different homes and buildings from the 19th and early 20th century around the city of St. Louis. I'd like you to like, comment, and subscribe to this house.